Hey there, folks. Welcome to the second lab of FSDL 2022. Today, we'll be covering PyTorch Lightning and convolutional neural networks. So once again, we're going to start from the GitHub repo for the labs. In that repo, whether you're on GitHub or if you've cloned it locally, if you navigate to the lab two folder, you'll see in the notebooks folder, we've got two lab notebooks this time, one covering PyTorch Lightning and one covering convolutional neural networks. I'm gonna use the notebooks via collab again. So going back to that main page, scrolling down to the bottom and clicking these badges to open the notebooks in collab. So the first lab, 2A, introduces PyTorch Lightning, which is our training framework on top of PyTorch. In lab one, we wrote a training loop using just components of Torch, starting with Torch tensors and then adding features of Torch.nn and other libraries inside PyTorch. And we ended up with something like this pseudocode here. That worked well for the problems we were trying to solve in that notebook, fixed data set, fairly simple models. As we started to try and add more features like GPU acceleration, we found out that it was insufficiently flexible to handle all the problems that we wanted to handle. And in general, it's also hard to reuse a PyTorch training loop that you write yourself, unless you've written enough of them that you know all the things that you're going to want to do in the future. Also, this is something that lots and lots of people want to do. If you're using PyTorch, you're probably using it to train neural networks, so you're probably going to want to do a lot of these things with data loaders and moving to and from GPUs and, and applying gradients. So this is really kind of like shared boilerplate and it's got lots of sharp edges, difficult things, surprising behaviors. So this is a classic case where you want to use a library or a framework rather than rolling your own. And PyTorch Lightning is one of the most popular frameworks for training in PyTorch. PyTorch Lightning is a really rich library with tons of features and components. We're going to focus on some of the most important ones, which are lightning modules that go on top of our torch modules and connect them to training, lightning data modules, which organize our torch data loaders and data sets, the PyTorch Lightning Trainer, which takes those things, puts them together, and does our actual training loop and our validation loop and our testing loop. And then PyTorch Lightning Callbacks that allow us to add features to training, turn on model checkpointing and turn off model checkpointing without having to rewrite code. So the notebook walks you through PyTorch Lightning and its components. I'm not going to focus on that bit of it, and I'm instead going to focus on how Lightning gets used in the full stack deep learning code base that we're building up to make this text recognition system. So with each lab, we're going to add additional components to this code base, slowly iteratively building up to a code base that's capable of training models and deploying them and monitoring them. In the previous lab, all we had was models and data. Now, the text recognizer library has a new component, lit models, that has our PyTorch lightning modules in it. Right now, there's just a baseline version. We'll add more throughout the course of the labs. The bigger addition is now we have a new library training on top of our text recognizer. So this contains the things that we need to train our models. So most importantly, this run experiment.py script. You'll be using this script to train models. Uh, you can run it from inside a Jupyter notebook. There's some example commands here that show you how to get the help documentation from the script, but you don't necessarily have to just just use this experiment running framework as a script. It's also an importable module inside training. So you can bring it into the Jupyter Notebook and take a look at its components if you want to play around with them dynamically. So where this training script really gets used is in the second lab to train convolutional neural networks. So let's jump over to that. So the second lab, Lab 2B, covers convolutional neural networks. There's a lot of material on what convolutions are and why we use them, and also how to design convolutional neural networks. So read through the notebook to get that information. In this video, I wanted to focus on using the run experiment script. That's this section here. So I've already run through the notebook up to this point. Remember that you want to run the notebooks top to bottom, otherwise the bottom cells won't, won't run. So this cell here will run training. It uses GPUs if they're available. So I'm gonna run this and walk you through the outputs that appear. So first we see just some information from PyTorch Lightning about what hardware we have available, some logging messages. Then we see a summary of our model, including number of trainable parameters and what layers we have. And then we see this progress bar pop up. So this progress bar is showing our progress through an epoch of training. So you can see as batches go through, this progress bar is filling up. There's also some metric reporting that's happening behind my head. Once we get towards the end of the epoch validation starts, you can see the validation start 
started there. And once validation finishes, we run the model on the test set. We get some reported metrics there of performance on training, validation, and test. And we also see that the model got saved as a checkpoint. This collection of cells here walks you through how to reload models from a checkpoint and then run them and play around with them in the notebook. I think it's really important to always interact with your models and your data in order to understand your problem better. It's really easy to just get obsessed with metrics and charts and watching numbers go down or go up and lose connection with the actual problem that you're trying to solve. And the end result of this is always going to be a model that looks good on paper, but falls flat on its face as an actual component of an ML powered product. I always like to, as quickly as possible, get my models back into an interactive context where I can play with them. So that's what this cell is doing here, sending different inputs through our model. One of the neat things about this is you'll pretty quickly discover that there are some difficult, ambiguous inputs in this data set. So the model says that this particular input is probably a number zero, and that's a good guess, but it might be an, a capital O or a lowercase o. It might even be like a kind of slanted D. So there's some difficult examples in this data set, some classes that are really easy to confuse with each other, and that actually means that doing character recognition at a single character level is probably a bad idea because you, normally you would use context to disambiguate is this a zero or a capital O or a lowercase o that's going to depend on what other letters are around it but our model because it just sees one character at a time can't really disambiguate between these cases that's something that you could find out by looking at the data but you wouldn't see it necessarily in the metrics so then the last thing that we do in this lab is try and resolve that issue with the ambiguity of single characters really in the end we don't care about recognizing individual characters we care about hand handling text that people are submitting to us. And no one's gonna wanna sit around and submit one character at a time to our model. The first step that we wanna do is work on lines of handwritten text. And our data set only has individual characters. So you might think that we, need, we have to go back and get new data in order to keep going. But one of the most important tricks for avoiding a really expensive and complex data collection process is to use data synthesis to bootstrap the data that you have so that you can train a basic model that can get out there in the world and then start collecting the data that you really want to train on. We build a kind of fake lines of handwritten text data set by using a data set of sentences, the brown corpus, and then just using those handwritten text and digits to create these lines of text. So let's see what that looks like. We've just taken those individual images of handwritten characters and put them next to each other to create this line of text. So this synthetic line data is not perfect. Let's see a few more of them. Yeah, these don't look exactly like text that you might encounter in the real world. The handwriting style isn't consistent. It kind of maybe looks like a ransom note of like pasted together text, but this is a start. It's really great for code based development and idea generation to at least have something that looks closer to the actual data that will bring up problems that are actually gonna come around when you have the real data to try out more complex modeling approaches, data handling approaches, and you can incorporate it into training alongside real data to improve your model performance and get it over the line so that you're able to put it out there.